What's going on? So I'm going to do a short little video. Damn, my voice is <clears throat> pretty scratchy today. I'm going to do a short little video going over a CPL filter and why you should get one, especially if you're photographing cars, the automotive industry. Now, I've been on and off in photography, keyword on and off, with more emphasis on the off, for about 10 years. I'm shooting with a very old style camera it's a it's a nikon d3100 dslr and a d3100 you check the specs on those it's nothing special now i'm not a pro um when i say on and off probably 80 percent off i just recently got back into it in the past year when i started driven district in the automotive industry and honestly i just take shots of my own car friends cars local cars etc and i'm still rocking that really old 10 year old camera I'm going to say something that a lot of folks have said, and it is true. Um, I'm not saying, oh my God, my photos are amazing, but some of the photos that I'm able to produce, I think are pretty good. The camera's really old. So basically what I'm trying to say is the editing and the photographer themselves, how you're taking photos and how you're editing composition, etc., and your lens is going to be a lot more important than the camera itself. My camera, D3100 not really good specs but i have two upgraded lenses i have the nikkor 50 millimeter i think it's an f 1.8 then i have a sigma ah, I, I can't think off the top of my head it's like a seven shit i don't know it's like an f 2.4 f 2.8 17 to 50 i don't know 50s i'll put it up here what that is i'll have a link in the description because i got those off amazon a long time ago those two are both really good affordable upgraded lenses the 15 millimeter is more like a prime. Uh, it is a prime. I mean, it's more like a portrait lens, but you can get some pretty good photography even with cars, but understand you're probably going to have to go way back, especially if you're using a crop sensor camera like I was using. The variable zoom lens, that Sigma one, is actually pretty nice. Now, the CPL filter. I'm going to show you an example, and this might sound like a really beginner thing, but I'm just kind of sharing my experience as I go. So as I learn, I'm going to be sharing some of that too. If you're already a pro, you probably know all this. But if you're watching this and you want to learn a little bit more, hopefully you find some value out of this. One of the most important things that I forgot to do when I got the CPL filter is I went to go take that first shot. You know, you turn the CPL filter until you get the reflections away where you want them, etc. Take a shot. Then you move to go take another photo. And I didn't know that you got to readjust. So every time you move, even if you're going from landscape to portrait, or you move left and right, when you move that camera, that CPL filter, again, needs to get rotated until you can dial in how you want it, where you want to remove the reflections, etc. And if you remove it from one area, it's probably going to appear somewhere else. So unless you're kind of going head on or directly, it's going to kind of go back and forth. So if you have a camera good enough, take multiple shots, then you can in post do it better. But in my example, I just dial it in, take a shot. So if the car is angled, it might give it a nice clean appearance on one side. And you may see a little reflection on the other, it's just the way it is. But I'm going to show you some examples with the CPL filter on turned kind of, I guess you can say off, so to say, where it's not being used and taken away the reflection. And then when it's on the right area, you're going to see the crazy difference this does, especially in automotive photography. So let's jump in and take a look at those examples. So first thing I just want to go over is I'm going to show you the exact lens kit that I was using. So you can go, of course, go more expensive, whatever, but I was just going with a more budget friendly option. I had good reviews. I purchased it. I really liked it. I bought this, I think it was 77 for one of my lens and 55 for the other. So obviously make sure you're getting the right size for your lens. The number should be on the side of your lens as well. And this is pretty nice because you get a three pack, you get the ND filter, you get a UV filter, and you get the CPL. So now with an ND filter, if you're trying to shoot like long exposure, rolling, shots etc in automotive photography or anywhere actually even just anything that you're going to do a longer exposure and it's very very bright so you don't want to overexpose it that's where the neutral density filter is used cpl again really helps with glare reflection etc the uv filter i honestly put under the cpl just to protect the lens itself there's other talk about that you can research if you want to but this is the exact kit that i got that i've been using and if you're interested in a budget option i will have the link below it's going to be one of my amazon affiliate links which does help support the channel so if you find some value out of this you can go ahead and use those links so now we're going to jump into the photo comparison where i'm literally just going to show you side by side two photos that i took 
and I stood at the same spot, same setting, same everything. Only difference is I turned the CPL filter to help remove those glares and reflections. The goal, just so you can see if you haven't noticed it yet, and hopefully you'll see the power of a CPL filter, why you should get one and how it's gonna help and improve your photography. Let's jump in and take a look at those. All right, so the first image I'm gonna show you guys is just a very simple, now just keep in mind, all of these photos are straight out of camera. They're not edited, they're not touched up. Some of them will be overexposed, some of them will be underexposed. This is not a tutorial on how to edit photos, although I might do that in the future. This is more just to see the difference. So on the left here, what you're gonna notice is a ton of reflection both on the hood area and then going straight up into the windshield if you just took this photo you might just think oh it looks good you know that's just natural the way it looks but then once you compare it to the one with the cpl filter on and turned proper it's night and day difference you can see straight through the windshield you can see the hood is now black it has more black tone it's got a lot more depth to it it just looks so much cleaner looking more appealing to the eyes if you were to then further edit these photos and post these somewhere or show them to someone this looks to me 10 times better than this one on the left hand side now quickly jumping into the next one because again like i said i'm just here to kind of show you guys the power of a cpl filter this one's a little more up close on the hood area we have a little reflection of a building that's obviously gonna just be there but if you look at this it looks decent i guess you know the car looks black to a degree but now let's see what happens when we actually dial in our cpl filter look at the difference over here Again, this is taken, you know, I kind of just stood there, took a photo, turned it, took another photo. Nothing else changed. Now the paint just gained so much depth and you see the black. It doesn't have this gray tone that's kind of kind of washed out looking or whatever. Even the headlights are looking a little bit more crisp. And again, these are not edited. These are straight out of the camera. This one here is going to be an extremely noticeable one. If you look in here, there is just a ton a ton of reflection now i will say right off the bat this was one of the photos that was kind of overexposed. um if i were to do this again i would rather underexpose this one and then in post play with the shadows down here but for just the sake of comparison even a photo like this so like i said you still see some over here the camera settings you know i kind of could have underexposed it a little bit more it is a little overexposed but just take a look at the difference over here and most importantly the windshield it's almost see-through so to say this next one we're going to put more focus and emphasis again on the windshield area and also kind of this front at first so let's look at that stuff first and if you look again the windshield looks so much more appealing to the eyes you can see the seat you can see the steering wheel and this one you can't even see the steering wheel here you can see the steering wheel now on the front side, again, you're taking away a ton of reflection. It looks really, really nice. But on the flip side, like I said earlier, when you turn in that CPL filter, I'm taking away reflections on this angle, so to say, but then what happened? We gained some reflection in this area. So here where it was gone before, we started to gain some of that. Now these were taken handheld and I, it was if it was on a tripod and you could not move at all this is the example of where i'm saying you can take multiple photos and then in post kind of layer them and mask them out i've never done light painting but i believe it's a similar fashion and similar manner to that that's something i want to do into the future basically you have multiple photos and you take the best parts of each photo and turn them into that end result that near perfect end result now really quickly let me see if i could even do this we're gonna pretend let's take this let's move it to the right over here they're not perfect i'm slowing the opacity i'm gonna try and line them up as you can tell they're not even you know i took them at the same time but obviously i moved more than i should have but let's just pretend this is just for example purposes so now this is where CPL, I dialed it in where it really looks good on the windshield and on the hood, but we added more reflection here. So what we would do is basically make a mask of this, turn it off, and then have our brush on white, and then we can paint in. Now, mind you, it's not gonna look 
perfect because it's actually not like dialed in exactly the car actually is moving as i'm doing this but if the car was the same exact position just for reference now we have the best of both worlds right here so we have original where it's putting a ton of reflection on the top where i dialed in on the top because that's where i want the eyes to go or where i think the eyes will go at least but then you add reflection here but now if you took two photos that are identical and all you did was turn the filter then you can put them on top of each other and mask them out and make that semi-perfect photo just a little touch and example of that as well so now here we have a photo that is pretty underexposed to begin with totally fine um you can't see on the top here but i had some nice sky natural sky and i wanted to expose for that hence why this is a little underexposed again if you look at this and an untrained eye might just be like oh yeah this looks nice you know then you turn on well, you turn the CPL filter to dial in that glare and reflection on the windshield and you get this. Now, just, just look how much better that looks. So hopefully you guys are really seeing the power of a CPL filter and how it can really step up your game in the automotive photography. Like I said, I'll have the links below to the one that I got. It's more of a budget kit, comes with three ND, CPL, and UV. If you find this valuable, you wanna use those links. They're gonna be Amazon affiliate links. It does help support the channel. Let's move on. We got more here real quick. So if we go to the, actually this next one is just gonna be an example of an edit. So this one, left is out of camera i know i'm not going over editing in this uh, tutorial or whatever you want to even call this video but i wanted to show a little bit of a before and after of a straight out of camera and a nice little edit not too over the top i like to try and keep a lot of my edits natural looking and emphasize what's there sometimes i like to have fun with it everyone you know it's art at the end of the day do whatever you want to do this is art have fun with it but this example is one where it's kind of a little more natural looking. I tried to emphasize what was there. At times I'll do a sky replacement. I'd like to not be too crazy with it, but this was a natural sky. So left is completely out of camera, the raw photo, and the right is with me doing an edit to it. Like I said, I tried to emphasize what was there. I made the car look a little bit brighter, the wheels, the brakes, uh, the sky especially, I tried to make just bring a little more warmth and tones to it. And I'm gonna have hopefully some more videos into the future going over some editing. This was all done in Lightroom. I was someone who always used Photoshop in the past to edit photos, but I started using Lightroom not that long ago, sometime this year. So what I'm gonna do is make a playlist actually on my channel, Driven District, just for like photography, editing, maybe even video stuff into the future. So if you're interested in this type of stuff, be sure to subscribe and that playlist will always be updated when I have that, which will be mixed in with all my other types of, you know, automotive related content. So this is my blue RSX. It's one of my newer cars that I got. And on the left side, which you're looking at right now, there is a ton of glare and reflection across the hood and the windshield. Now let's see what happens when we turn that CPL filter. Boom. So there we go. You could again see right through it, both on the top, on the sunroof, on the windshield, on the hood. It just looks 10 times better. And again, since we just went over editing, I'm gonna turn on my edited version of this photo on the right hand side right now. And that's the edited version a very light edit too like i said at times i like to keep it natural and just emphasize what's there the car is blue i want the blue to pop but at the same time i made kind of the background a little bit more of a warmer tone so again this was on the right hand side out of camera both of these are out of camera it's just cpl turned the wrong way on the left hand side and the right way on the right hand side but on the right hand side here is the edited again the darkers the dark <laughs> dark spots are a little bit darker the blue pops even more even though i was able to warm up the tones and still keep the blue popping more simple edit in lightroom and again last photo i want to show you guys is on the left hand side crazy reflections everywhere and that same photo that i just stood there and turned the cpl filter there it is 
Again, you can see through, but keep in mind again, look at this left hand side where there really wasn't too much reflections. Now you incorporated a ton more because I gave it away here. I took away the reflections on this angle and it started over there. Like I said earlier, always remember to turn it every time you move. And if you are using a tripod or you can stay steady or whatever, ideally you want to mask together multiple photos if the car is on an angle like this. And again, I'm gonna just pop on the right-hand side, the edited version, both of these again, out of camera. The right-hand side, again, out of camera, just with CPL. And here's my edited version of that car. Similar to the edit I showed you before, I emphasized what was there, at least I tried to. The car just kind of pops even more with the blue, while at the same time, I kind of brightened it up and gave the background, I would say a little bit more of a warm tone. So again, if you're interested in this, you wanna see more, go ahead, give it a like, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you know more than me, educate me. You know what I'm saying? I'm still new to this. So this video hopefully is gonna help those beginner folks who are trying to just better their automotive photography hopefully with the cpl filter if you don't have one go ahead and grab one and as far as the editing goes all these were done in lightroom i have never used presets before i just make my own presets i've seen tons of stuff with presets i've seen other youtubers and other you know preset packs i've always thought about trying them but honestly i think the best way to learn is through experience so i found videos on how to edit in Lightroom, and then I started editing myself. I would think of a way that I wanted to edit, like this example here, and I just kind of played with it, got to this, I liked it, and then I went and created my own preset in Lightroom. Now I can take this exact photo look and everything and apply it to any of my other photos in this set that have that same look and vibe to it. So that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like I said before, if you did, give it a like, comment. It's a really good way for me to know you enjoyed it. And I will try to create other videos in photography if you're interested. Like I said, I'm still a beginner myself. So hopefully this helps someone. Thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.